Don't make the mistake yourself of copying a Mr. Olympia diet. Very few people could do this. I couldn't. And the fact that he can get through all that cardio and do his training on those few calories, amazing. Coach Greg, and can you freaking believe how good Chris Bumstead's looking right now? Is it not mind blowing? Are you not mind blown? I can't believe it. But in today's video, I'm going to be telling you exactly what he does to get to this level. You're not going to believe it. Well, maybe some of you will, but it is astonishing what this man can do. I think it's obvious Chris Bumstead, not actually from this earth, definitely from Krypton. He's potentially breaking the laws of thermodynamics. It is that redonkulous. We're going to go over his diet and training that he has to do right now to make it to the Olympia stage and win with the most obvious victory in the history of the Olympia. I'm calling it now. You are not going to believe what you see at this year's Olympia. Not going to believe it. Watch this video and try to debate me. Try to set up an argument that there's a chance that Chris could lose. Biceps getting a smidgen better every year. Does that look like a weakness to you? Anyone else in the world, that's their best body part. This is ridiculous. When I'm hitting Olympia number 30, I'll be like, wow, Chris has 20 inch arms. He did it. You hear that? In about 25 years from now, uh, when he wins his 30th Olympia, they're gonna say, wow, he has over 20 inch arms. The crazy thing is I actually think that Chris Bumstead could potentially win the Olympia for 30 years straight. 30 years. This is a once in a lifetime physique that we may never ever see again. It is mind blowing. And yes, of course it has a lot to do with genetics. Without Chris's God given genetics, couldn't get the physique he has. But could you put in the work that Chris has to put in to get this physique? You guys can see inside how I feel right now. That's a visual representation of how I feel. Frankly, having seen what he's doing, I'm surprised he could even function enough to get through a training session. I couldn't. I'm a professional bodybuilder, 59 competitions. I consider myself to be highly motivated. I could not do what Chris is doing, even with his genetics. I started a really big push, so my body right now doesn't even know what food is. But it's at that nice point where it's so low. Just don't even care, just like whatever. And so Chris, well, he's starving, but he doesn't care. Under two weeks to go. He's got a weight class to make. He can't show up overweight. Even if he looked amazing, if he doesn't make the weight class, he can't compete. So he needs to do, as Rich Piana always said, whatever it takes. Whatever it takes. Trust me, you will not believe what Chris has to do to make weight, arrive at the Miss Olympia, and win for years and years to come. Weights are feeling heavy. I'm at the point now where I'm like so lean and depleted that just like contracting the muscle feels like it's in a whole new different body. And so Chris is saying he's flat and depleted right now. Does it look flat and depleted? But for him, this is flat and depleted. Imagine what he's gonna look like when he competes. Skinny bitch. The legs look a bit watery. And so imagine, Chris thinks he has watery legs. Imagine, look how shredded he is. If he considers this watery, just envision how he's going to look on stage. Mind blowing. And this is the mind of a champion. You're never satisfied. You think you have your dream physique? Imagine you look like Chris right now. Not good enough. Leaner legs, they're too watery. Diet harder than last time. And more cardio and dieting harder is an understatement of what this guy's about to do. My cardio is at about two hours a day right now. Rest days, it's two hours and like 10 minutes. And then on most training days, I'm doing two hours. Two hours a day, you know, just an hour in the morning, an hour later in the day, two hours on training days. And on days off of the gym, is it a day off? Nope, two hours, 10 minutes of cardio a day. Look at this guy, yet he's doing two plus hours of cardio a day. I'm gonna be filming a full day of eating for my next video, so be stay, stay tuned for that. But it was around 1,800 to 1,500 calories, depending on my training or off days of what I was eating. And what about his diet? Probably eating 5,000 calories a day. A specimen like this must be force feeding. 1,800 calories a day. On training days, 
1500 a day on days off the gym. Oh, but you can't eat 15 to 1800 calories on a diet because you're a woman and you need to eat more because you're starving yourself because you have a slow metabolism. Chris Bumstead, 250 pounds of shredded muscle, doing two hours cardio a day and training, eating 50 to 1800 calories a day. I'm not making this shit up. I'm literally posting what he's saying. So when you tell me, oh, I can't eat 1500 calories, that's not enough calories for my body. I'm a 135 pound female. Chris Bumstead is eating 15 to 1800. Calories in, calories out. Or is it? Has Chris Bumstead broken the laws of thermodynamics? Well, let's see. Pretty much I weighed 254 pounds for 25 days. It just wasn't budging, so I kept pushing harder and harder. Still just trusting the process that would come along. Chris was weighing 254 pounds for 25 straight days. He kept cutting his calories, but the weight scale wasn't moving. So does that not prove it's not calories in, calories out? No, no, it doesn't prove that. In this house, we obey the laws of thermodynamics. Well, what happened? Well, this is what happened. Remember when I said you could turn fat into muscle, but not technically, literally? But what's happening is the fat stores on Chris's body were being used to combine with water and amino acids from the protein he's eating to build muscle. So he took the fat and used that energy to build more muscle. Kept his weight at 254 pounds. Got leaner and added muscle at the same time. But isn't that impossible? You, that's impossible. You can't build muscle in a deficit. It's not possible. Chris Bumstead did it. And he did it while being at an elite level while doing hours and hours of cardio on a dramatically restricted diet. And how you're asking... Well, Chris is admittedly not natural. He's on PDs. And those PDs, they do make it easier to build muscle. You can't just sit on your ass, starve yourself and build muscle. People will quote some study saying, oh yeah, they did. But well, in that study, they gained water weight. You can gain water. When we did a big push, I got down to like 247 and I was around 247, 246 for like two weeks-ish. And then finally, it just started kind of coming down like 0.2 pounds every day. And so what did they do? He was stuck at 254 pounds. His weight limit is now 242 pounds. Chris is just over six foot one. If he was just under six foot one, as in if he shrunk a quarter of an inch, his weight limit would be 232. He wouldn't be able to compete in the Olympia. He'd be too big, too massive. He'd have to compete in open. Doesn't want that, so he has to make weight. So how is he going to make weight? He literally has to lose muscle. He has too much muscle to make classic physique, and so he's drastically lowering his calories, doing tons of cardio, 14 hours of cardio a week while eating 15 to 1800 calories. That is fewer calories and more cardio than Brandon Harding was doing. Remember Brandon Harding? What happened to Brandon Harding? Lost a lot of muscle, got shredded, but lost some muscle in the process. But this is Chris Bumstead, the Mr. Frickin' Olympia, 254 pounds, has muscle in spades. Brandon Harding, same height, competed in the 190s. Was 210, 215 pounds, and kept dieting. Chris has 40 plus more pounds than Brandon Harding. You think Brandon's big, and he is in fact. That is how much bigger Chris is. You cannot truly appreciate just how much muscle that Chris has unless you see him in person posing on that freaking stage. Never been this big before, so I think I might have put on six pounds of stage weight maybe. I don't want to jinx it, but you'll find out soon enough. He says he's put on six pounds of stage weight. Who knows? Maybe more. But if he keeps eating 15 to 1800 calories, two hours cardio a day, even with PDs, he is in fact going to lose muscle. You can have all the carpenters in the world, but without the nails and the wood, you can't build a house. So Chris is literally starving himself to death right now. He's going to shrink and get smaller. He's losing about 0.2 pounds a day. Why? Because he has to. His off-season diet close to 5,000 calories. He was dieting on over 3,000 calories a day, getting leaner. 
But since that time, he's had to make drastic changes. Whatever it takes. It's not sustainable. He's not going to diet like this for the rest of his life. This is a short-term diet to get him to the stage, to be bigger and leaner than ever before. Chris has an excellent coach, Ian Valair. He knows what he's doing. They've done this multiple times. But don't make the mistake yourself of copying a Mr. Olympia diet. Very few people could do this. I couldn't. And the fact that he can get through all that cardio and do his training on those few calories, amazing. You're thinking, yeah, but he's on PDs. I was on PDs and more than he's on, and I couldn't do it. So I'm telling you, when you're starving yourself to this point and doing all that cardio and you're this lean, your body is literally, quite literally, running on fumes. Using whatever fat is left in his body and muscle tissue to supply the energy that he needs. He needs to have a lot of protein. Some of that protein, it's being converted to energy. He needs the energy. How is he doing the cardio without energy? You need to get it somewhere. You can get it from the fat. But when you don't have hardly any fat left, the body say, nah, we'll take it from your biceps, from your lats. We need some of those calories. So Chris is going to be shrinking at this point, losing some muscle. But the end result is going to be the most massive, ripped, classic physique competitor of all time. Got to give a shout out to my boy, Rough Diesel Terrence. I trained with him a few weeks ago when we were seeing his updates and I thought he was pretty behind and I was like, he pulled it together and looked absolutely crazy. And what is Chris's thoughts on his competition? Well, he trained with Terrence a couple weeks before the Arnold's and he was like, dude, you're off. But Terrence, perhaps he pulled a Chris Bumstead diet, lost so much weight, showed up in the stage. Gertie. And so Terrence, although he lost a lot of weight, he still has more to lose. He might have to continue to pull a Chris Bumstead to get completely shredded for the Olympia stage. Another person I was super impressed with was Logan Franklin. He competed earlier this year, looked really good, came back and looked way better this time. And his thoughts on Logan Franklin, similar physique to him, except not as much muscle, weighs a lot less. As big as Logan Franklin is, not big enough. And he's quite literally 100% true. Logan is not at his weight limit. He can get a lot bigger. Not easy to get that big, but classic physique is for mass monsters. You're thinking, no, they're not. They're small. Chris Bumstead is freaking a giant. He was 254 pounds for 25 days. He's starving himself to make the weight class. He's still massive. Ryan Jones also looked really good. I think with a few more weeks coming in the Olympia, if he comes in tighter, he's going to be right up there pushing past closer to you know, third place or so. So as I see it, and potentially this is how Chris sees it as well, Chris comes out on top, Terrence Ruffin in second, Brian Jones in third, and Breon Ainsley fourth place this year. Every time I finish cardio, I'm like going hypo and I'm like falling asleep in the car on the way home, like feeling like I'm gonna vomit, throw up, hungry, just like dying. He's going hypo after doing cardio, feels like throwing up, vomiting. Does that look like a sustainable diet? Of course not. And Chris is not telling you to follow this diet. This is what he has to do, whatever it takes to win the Olympia. But I love it. It's just this like satisfying feeling. It's like torture of myself. So he's highly motivated because he's enjoying the process of torturing himself, knowing just how good he's going to be on that stage. This is not a normal mindset, nor is it something that most of you should do. This is if you're trying to win the Olympia. Please don't think you need to starve yourself, do endless hours of cardio, feel like you're gonna pass out, throw up, starve, forget what food tastes like. This is for a professional bodybuilder, the best in the world. And here's a little more torture. And once the Olympia's over, he's gonna go off that diet. He's gonna bulk again. You're thinking, oh, Coach Greg's against bulking. No, I'm not against bulking. Chris cannot sustain this 15 to 1800 calories a day. He's going to have to bulk, eat more, get into a surplus. Of course he does. Then what's he going to do? He's going to have to diet again and likely starve himself to make the weight class again. That's because he's a professional bodybuilder. Are you a professional bodybuilder? Do you have a weight class that you have to make or else you can't compete? If you do, then good. Bulk and cut. If you don't, if you're normal, average person, main game. 
hopefully you understand it. Ending it here. GregDuset.com for coaching. Greg Duset IP Pro. Please watch one of the bloops. Don't forget the harder than last time supplements that Gertie knocked over. Get those by clicking the link in the description. And a cookbook for normal eaters. Click the link in the description for that. Training books, coaching plans by me and my team. If you like the video, like it, subscribe, click the bell button. And until next time, I'm out.